The dust has started to settle from a bruising election day, and we're getting a clearer picture of how much the landscape has changed on Capitol Hill. Republicans made the biggest gains in the House of Representatives. The GOP grabbed control of that chamber by knocking off dozens of incumbent Democrats. There was some comfort for the Democrats, though. They lost at least six seats in the Senate, but retained control there. President Obama called Tuesday's results a shellacking for Democrats, but he promised to work toward compromising with Republicans. I'm not suggesting this will be easy. I won't pretend that we'll be able to bridge every difference or solve every disagreement. There's a reason we have two parties in this country, and both Democrats and Republicans who have certain beliefs and certain principles that each feels cannot be compromised. But what I think the American people are expecting and what we owe them is to focus on those issues that affect their jobs, their security, and their future. So what can we expect from the new leaders on Capitol Hill? Shira Tuplitz from Politico joins us from Washington with more. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Sure. Great to, for you to be here with us. I want to ask you this. Will we see compromise in Washington, or are we more likely to see just gridlock, something that a lot of voters did not want to see once they went to the polls? Well, I'd hate to disappoint uh, the millions of viewers out there, but let's look at the way the elections fell last night. Republicans made huge gains in the House. Democrats still, however, hold the Senate after Tuesday night, and President Obama obviously still the president in the White House. He was not up for a re-election on Tuesday. This means Republicans have one chamber, Democrats hold another, the president has the White House. That's definitely a recipe for gridlock. Well, you know, so many Republicans campaign on repealing health care reform. How likely is that to happen now? It's a very, very difficult path. It's much more difficult than I think perhaps a lot of Republicans would want to let on on the campaign trail and even a few Democrats who campaigned upon, campaigned on it. It's, it's a totally, uh, it's a very difficult process. They'd basically have to rewrite the bill, pass it again, and the president would have to sign off on it. I mean, it's just a very difficult process to do. Let's talk about the Tea Party for just a second because it won a lot of House races and they really set the tone for this election. But in the Senate, it lost some key races in Colorado, Nevada, and it's possible that the Tea Party candidate in Alaska, Joe Miller, may lose as well. With all of that said, what kind of impact has the Tea Party had overall? Well, I think it, you mentioned it, it, what you said was absolutely right. The big impact was definitely in the House. We saw a lot of Tea Party candidates, these very populist, very conservative candidates win their House races. But in the Senate, actually might have cost the GOP a couple of seats. Let's look at races in Nevada, where there were some perhaps more moderate Republicans who lost the primary to these Tea Party candidates. Same thing in Delaware with Mike Castle and uh, Christine O'Donnell. You know, a lot of Republicans this morning are pointing fingers saying, gee, we could have won that race if we had the uh, more moderate, more, quote, establishment candidate running instead of the Tea Party favorite. Well, I wonder how that is really going to shake out because uh, take this for example, Senator Jim DeMitt urged incoming Tea Partiers to keep their independence from the establishment Republicans. Is that a sign that we are going to see a power struggle between the two? I think there is going to be a bit of a power struggle because without a doubt there is now this very verbal faction of the Republican Party both in the Senate and to a much greater degree in the House that's going to be the thorn in the side of what we consider the establishment Republicans and that caucus is certainly led by Senator Jim DeMint in the Senate. But again I'd like to emphasize because quite a few Tea Partiers lost their races or perhaps might lose the races in the case of Alaska, the caucus is not going to be nearly as big as probably Senator DeMint would hope. All right, Shira Tuplitz from Politico. Thanks for joining us this morning. Thanks for having me.